Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to this fourth papers and posters session named Anatomy of Music AI. Um, so short presentations, no questions right now. We're going to reserve, like, keep our questions for the following posters. And just as a, as a reminder, we will have the closing session at 4.15 past 4. Um, so first paper is going to be sequential pitch distributions for raga detection by Bees, Vaz, Nara, Synth, and Synthi Raja. Okay. But I see the PDF. Are they online? Hey, are you online? Yeah. So. Okay. I'm not sure I can. Uh. Uh, I don't hear the. I think he's online, but I cannot hear the, um, the sound. Oh, okay. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah, I couldn't hear you. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, the title of the paper is Sequential Pitch Distribution for Rapid Detection. Uh, and uh, I'm Rishman, and my colleague, uh, Liz Henry. Uh, we are independent organizations uh, of the human follow. We work in the natural search, uh, but we're not uh, associated with that uh, for the paper. Uh, move on. Uh, yeah. Second, second slide. Uh, I'm sure uh, a lot of you are already aware of what a raga is, but still, uh, let me just try to emphasize what a raga is. So, uh, a raga is a methodologic framework in Indian classical music, and it's like the core concept of uh, Indian music. So, a uh, raga can refer to another raga by either having a different set of notes, uh, maybe pentatonic or uh, six notes in a, in a raga. Uh, different ascending and descending patterns, meaning that a transition from one note to the other may be allowed in an ascending manner, but the descending from uh, note B to note A might not be allowed. And note salience, uh, which, is, uh, which uh, is like the importance given to each note can be different, and melodic motives, those are like the phrases of music. Uh, why is it important? Uh, this acts like the foundation block for several higher level tasks uh, that include uh, music recommendation systems, uh, transcription, uh, music information retrieval, uh, and also uh, in, as a sort of music education. Why is uh, raga detection challenging? Uh, it's primarily due to the very nature of uh, raga and uh, the nature of Indian classical music, which is improvisation. Uh, besides these, uh, uh, raga is not the local feature, meaning that raga has to be listened to several minutes or maybe several seconds, uh, which can actually uh, increase the time complexity of uh, to process because even if we're processing at 16,000 samples per second, uh, reading for 60 seconds would make it 16,000 into 60, which is quite a lot of words to process. Uh, and coming to the overview of the paper. Uh, our heart of the system lies in the feature engineering, where we're extracting temporal characteristics of the raga, uh, where we extract pitch, pitch values and distribution of pitch values between any two given pitch values. And uh, we also uh, extract the direction of transition, meaning that a transition from, say, pitch A to pitch G can be like A, B, C, D, F, G, or can be like A, A, G, sharp, G. Those are two different directions of transition. Uh, and then we also have uh, a supervised learning algorithm, which is a simple k nearest neighbors algorithm, uh, an end symbol of it, and uh, uh, cross validation. So yeah. moving on. Here. I found a ready book. So uh, prior work mostly concentrates on the on simple pitch distribution, uh, where they extract non-temporal characteristics of a raga, 
in, in our paper, we consider temporal tangles, which are kind of the important contribution from, from our end. And uh, we also consider the direction of transition as mentioned uh, for And several prior works uh, are mostly consist of limited set of or a handful set of others, this three or four. Uh, but then our current approach, we consider uh, a whole bunch of like 30 Hindustani and 40 Kanadi others. Hindustani and Kanadi are different sub traditions in the uh, classical business. Uh, and uh, so we benchmarked against a, method, a recent method called as TDMS, which uh, kind of does the uh, does extract temporal characteristics uh, and has been the state of the art, but uh, we are actually slightly above that, I think, some way. Um, yeah, moving on. So yeah, uh, so in any random detection model follows this framework where there's a pitch detection first and tonic detection next, and uh, the pitch values are rearranged or you know rotated based on the tonic. Uh, and then back to the radar detection. So this is the, the basic scheme of any radar detection. Uh, yeah. So this is the kind of the heart of the system. So where we are extracting the temporal features of a of a radar. So first we start by looking at the start pitch value, and then we look at the end pitch value. And these pitch values can be any of the twelve pitch values. And so we are doing twelve cross twelve minutes. So we are we are taking any note to any note transition, and, uh, and, I, and we are getting the distributions between those transitions. So for example, uh, in the figure on the right, you can see we, are, we have extracted a transition from uh, ma to which is the solfate syllable in the classical music like do, re, mi, bo, etc. Uh, and we have taken the distribution between ma to So that, that is in the second direction or the positive direction, and we also extracted the distribution from ni to ma in the negative direction. So, this importance to direction uh, has been lacking in several of the papers before, but uh, I think this is something important to consider for other for detection. Yeah, moving on. Uh, yeah, so model and the results. So, so the figure that you see here in figure 3 uh, is the difference between the sequential pitch distribution that we obtained and the conventional. Uh, or a simple pitch distribution that uh, many of the higher methods obtain. For example, uh, we see in few of the radars where the ascending and descending transitions are different, we see a different pitch distribution with our method. Uh, and uh, some, some radars have similar ascending transition but different descending transitions, which can be kind of easily seen in, uh, in the diagrams and uh, the distributions shown here. Uh, and we also see the uh, you know, butter charter distance that is kind of like the like the distance between two different features or two different distributions. Uh, that that can also be seen. So any radar that has that has highly unsymmetrical transitions has higher distance between them. And that is also clearly observed in a couple of radars where the you know, symmetry between the transitions are extremely different. Uh, and this is kind of nicely captured with uh, the current approach. And we uh, are just about the state of the art, uh, where we have 99% accuracy in, in the study, uh, data sets and uh, around 88% accuracy on the Carnatic data sets. Uh, besides these, it's actually even to an extent tempo invariant, so we can actually play the same music in different tempos and still get approximately the same accuracy. Mm -hmm. All right. uh, yes, uh, any question on this? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next paper is the AI Music Generation Challenge 2022, summary and results by Bob Sturm. Where are these? Yes. Yeah. Good afternoon, you can hear me. I'm Bob Sturm from Stockholm uh, KTH. And I'm going to present uh, the, some of the results of the 2022 AI Music Generation Challenge. They have three aims to this challenge. How can we meaningfully evaluate music AI? How can music AI research benefit from considering traditional music and vice versa? And what are the ethics of music AI research applied to traditional music? 
In 2020, we had the first iteration of this challenge with a coincident with the AI Music Creativity Conference. And the challenge was to generate Irish double jigs in the style of a, a collection assembled around the turn of the 20th century, O'Neill's 1001. We had 35 submissions, uh, seven submissions generating 35 tunes. And the results of that was discussed at the conference. In 2021, we went to Sweden and the challenge was to generate Swedish slang polska. So this is a kind of Swedish dance, traditional dance, and six submissions to that challenge. The 2022 challenge was different. It was, went back to Ireland. We're focused on Irish reels, another kind of dance. But there were three sub-challenges. One was to generate the most plausible reels. The second challenge was to generate uh, the most accurate judge, artificial judge, and the third challenge was to generate titles for tunes. And so we had five submissions to the generation challenge, three artificial judges, including a benchmark, two benchmarks, and a, uh, two titlers. So that's actually three titlers, and I'll talk about that in a second. The generation sub-challenge featured these five uh, participants. There's a benchmark, which is just folk RNN version two, seated with the start token and the 4-4 meter token. And we provided some post-generation uh, filtering just to make sure it fits within the framework of what a reel is. And then we had a GRU-based language model, a variational autoencoder, a, a statistically informed recombination of material in O'Neill's, and then the benchmark but using beam search, so a more complicated sampling scheme. Here are the results. We have four judges. These are four human judges, all experts in the tradition, two in Sweden, two in Ireland. And at two stages of this uh, challenge, one is looking at the meter, the mode, and plagiarism and rhythm. If any of those are violated by a tune, it's automatically rejected. And we see that for some tunes. 806, for instance, from Carrie is plagiarized, detected by three of the judges. If a tune passed through to stage one, then it is evaluated along two dimensions, structure and melody, by the judge according to one to five, five being excellent, one being very poor. And um, judges were also tasked with selecting their favorite tunes of those that they evaluated. So that's what you see in green. A green highlighted tune is one that the judge said, this deserves to be discussed in the third phase of the, the challenge. We met to discuss all the elected tunes and together as uh, the four judges together decided to award first place to uh, a tune by the system Claire, number 507. Perfect scores across all of them. And then two second places tied uh, between these two systems. Now in 2020 and 2021, the challenge was won by my team. In 2022, we had a change of that and the winning team, number 507, comes from Korea. So this is uh, Daesam Jong's uh, group, research group in Sogong University in Korea. This is the real four measures, four measures times two, a very simple one. Now, of course, the second place winners, these are from my lab, so not all is lost. Of Real 507, the judges said the following, easy to remember, easy to follow and catch, uplifting, bright, fun, to dance to excellent, everything's right, that's a five plus, not plagiarized, very simple but consistent, and phrases are easy to remember, sits well within the tradition, very simple reel, adheres to all the variables regarding real structure, great rhythm, makes good use of repetition. And we performed, we went over this tune in the uh, summer school or workshop that we had at the beginning of this conference. So well done to that team in Korea. The judging sub-challenge saw two benchmarks, taking two different strategies to assessing these tunes against structure and melody and plagiarism. And then the third system, Claire, also from uh, Kim et al. and Sogong University, they won with a judge, an automatic judge that closely or most closely matched those scores of the judges. And I describe in the paper how that was assessed. Then we had the titling sub-challenge. There was three participants. One was a benchmark just priming GPT with give me a title for Irish tune that doesn't exist, say, and applying that to each one of the tunes that were selected as a favorite by the judges. And then the system from Korea also used GPT, but it was primed differently, and they looked at embeddings of tunes. And then I took it upon myself to title these tunes as best I could to see if a computer could beat that. But my titles received 22 votes, 
the clear uh, system won uh, one vote and no votes were given to the benchmark. So we still have some room to move. But this actually ended up with a very interesting aspect of this, this, um, this real, well, we can describe it as the poster, but they had some very interesting outcomes of that. So finally, the 2023 challenge, which is ongoing, is artificial music tradition. So use AI to generate artificial music tradition, whether it's the music, the, the legends, the lyrics, the, the uh, myths, the, the other ephemera costumes, and uh, we have more details at that website. So stay tuned for a very interesting and different challenge from the ones before. Thank you. And I think I'm next. Ah, you're next again? Yes. I okay, so. you want to introduce yourself then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me close down yeah. this. It's this paper, right? Okay, hello, I'm Bob Sturm from Stockholm <laughs> University. I'm presenting this on behalf of my PhD student, Laura, who couldn't be here today because of the strike, had to get back. Uh, but we're looking at the statistical evaluation of ABC formatted music at these different levels, items and corpora. We have two questions. We have two collections and one tune here, X. One question is, are the corpora A and B of the same whatever style is? Another question, is sample X from the same style as corpora A? There could be another question, is X closer to A than B? Those are our questions. Of course, these questions have been Somewhat answered before, the Keynesian approach by Enns and Pasquier presents an interesting statistical approach to comparing corpora. And it uses permutation testing and, and um, some nice uh, fundamental statistics to determine the similarity between two corpora. But because of the permutation testing, you do not know what tunes in a corpora cause the rejection or the failure to reject the null hypothesis in that. And we want to get to the hearts of, does this tune belong in this corpora? Or what are the tunes in this corpora that are furthest from the center? Or what are the tunes that are, that are in the center? Jeff Enns also looked at this problem with style rank. Now we go to an individual comparing an item to a corpus. The features that are used in this case are more musical uh, expert driven features. Um, and th this one is using some domain agnostic approaches like limple ziv compression, normalized compression distance. So we want to combine these two approaches. And so to do that, we're going to study different uh, distance measures and different statistical tests. We look at two different data sets. One is the 365 double jigs that are in O'Neill's, and we take that as corpus A. And another one is 365 imitations that have been generated by Folk RNN for the 2021, uh, 2020 challenge. We see over here the representation of these tunes in ABC notation. This is the kind of format we're looking at comparing and trying to derive style, and it's written as common practice notation there. We look at normalized compression distance, Levenstein distance, and cosine distance from the inner representation of folk RNN. We're interested in comparing distributions. So we have here two tunes from, uh, one tune from each corpus. The Jolly Joker is one from the O'Neill's collection. That is not seen by modern practitioners of the tradition to be within the tradition. This tune has been forgotten, they say, for good reason, because it's a very bad tune. So we're thinking that this would be something far outside the distribution, but we do see that the reference distribution here, which is saying O'Neill's tunes are, have this distance characteristic, the Jolly Joker looks pretty close to this distribution with respect to this uh, normalized Levenstein distance. The 1891 tune is the one that won first prize at the 2020 challenge and is thought to be, from the judges, the closest of the challenge to the 365 tunes in O'Neill's. More work is needed in this domain. We're using this to visualize tunes and collections. Ultimately, what we'd like to have is an artificial critic, a way to compare the hundreds of thousands of tunes generated by Folk RNN to this 365 to find the best, the cream of the crop, or the weirdest of the weird in those tunes that are still musically relevant. So we're looking at different approaches to unsupervised learning and visualization. Future work is also going to consider domain-specific measures, so taking it a bit closer to the domain-specific measures of style rank, and structural considerations with Irish 
traditional dance music, we can benefit from this rather standardized, standardized formats of the phrases. And um, furthermore, we'd like to apply this to computational musicology and compare with other work that has looked at the formal statistics of O'Neill's collection. So we have millions of generated tunes. We'd like efficient ways to identify outliers, model tunes, typical tunes, boring tunes, exciting tunes, and that's where this work uh, fits in. So please come by the poster and discuss. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so next on the line is parsing musical structure to enable meaningful variations by Maziar Kanani, Sean O'Leary, and James McDermott. It's this one, right? Hello everybody, my name is Maziar and I'm going, uh, I'm going to present our paper, uh, Parsing Musical uh, Structure to Enable Meaningful Variation. Well, uh, we focus on Irish folk tunes and uh, the idea is uh, taking um, existing tune and after parsing on that, uh, we represent the tune as a grammar and after applying a, a one mutation from a list of mutation that we we'll discuss uh, later in uh, next slides. Uh, we're gonna have a new grammar and then by expanding that, that grammar, we achieve the new tune, then par uh, reparsing that because the previous grammar doesn't work anymore and uh, we're gonna have a new grammar. So uh, by repeating the process uh, as much as the user wants, we uh, will achieve uh, the variation that was uh, desired. Um, the method that we use to parsing uh, is uh, pathway assembly and sequator algorithm. In pathway assembly method, we find uh, the, uh, that how was the cu uh, uh, creation for, a, uh, for an object. Uh, there's an example like abracadabra and uh, the uh, primary elements are A, B, C, D, R and after seven steps we have Abracadabra, and you can see in the graph that uh, how the pathway assembly uh, works in uh, the example. Now, the number of steps uh, called uh, pathway assembly index, and to calculate that, we use uh, sequator algorithm. And uh, there's an example for sequator algorithm. We have a left hand side and right hand side. In left hand side, we have our uh, rules names and right hand side there is a mix of uh, elements and also um, rules that uh, we have in uh, left side. Uh, in the next uh, step for mutation we introduce uh, 19 types of mutation based on uh, add, remove and change and uh, that can be applied on the uh, pitch value list. Uh, here you can see them more visually. Uh, separate on left hand side, right hand side, and which one happens on the rule or mix of rule and number. Uh, here is an example for uh, that's how the mutations occur. And uh, we have a list of uh, pitch values. Uh, we uh, create a grammar based on that. Uh, we have uh, seven uh, rules. Now, uh, randomly, the code uh, decided to have sweeping the right-hand side of uh, uh, P2 and P5. Then after that, we, uh, we um, create a new grammar. And by expanding that, we see that how 
uh, in, uh, how the, the mutation happened in uh, several points instead of just one point. And um, here is a visualization for the example. Uh, uh, the red uh, part shows how the tune has changed after just one uh, mutation. And there should be some more line. I don't know why. Anyway, um, now the point uh, and the objective for the uh, project firstly is keeping the structure. Uh, and the method allows us to having, uh, uh, keeping a PAI or pass fail assembly index. And uh, the other point is that um, we can have uh, achieve a big uh, enough change very quickly just after a few mutation. Uh, here in the graph, uh, in the figure, we can see that uh, how was the edit distance for the corpus uh, and how it has changed very soon before 20 mutations. And there is some example of the uh, results that we can listen to them in the uh, poster presentation. Sorry. And thank you. Okay, this should be a video. So next paper, next presentation is deep learning with audio and explorative syllabus for music composition and production by Korai Tairoglu, Chenran Wang, Edward Mihai Tampu, and Jackie Lin. The title of this talk is Deep Learning with Audio, an explorative syllabus for music composition and production. It's about a deep learning course that is designed specifically for graduate students in art studies. I'm Kurai Tayoglu, and the co-authors are uh, Shanran Wang, Edward Mihai Tampu, and Jacqueline. In this new course, we set our learning outcomes properly in order to meet our primary expectations, so that the students will be able to gain general knowledge of the recent audio and symbolic domain deep learning models. They will be able to learn how to prepare data sets and train deep learning models. They will explore the differences in input computational codes and sonic characteristics between different models, and they will create music compositions using audio and symbolic contents generated through these deep learning models introduced in this course. The course begins with an introduction to deep learning models, presenting some recent art productions in music. Then we continue with installation of the required tools for the course content, such as Pure Data, Python, Conda, Magenta, and Vyx External. One of the important objectives of this course is to make deep learning models more accessible to our students by incorporating them into Pure Data, the real-time audio synthesis environment that our students are much more familiar with. We have created PD objects utilizing deep learning algorithms for each deep learning model introduced in this course. Following the installation setup, uh, in the first day, students explore alternative AI to uh, models and discuss how their output differ. In the second day, the course introduces timber transfer in audio domain through DDSP, library by Magenta. We provide pre trained DDSP models for the class exercise in which students try a few different combinations of input audio and checkpoints, as well as they discuss how the input characteristics affect the output. The course assignment for uh, the following day involves students uh, preparing their own audio data set and start training their DDSP models. During the following day, first we discuss the initial results of the students' DDSP trainings and then we introduce generative adversarial networks to Galaxy's architecture. Hands-on exercise includes students interpolating between 
You can make a vector points using RPD patch and the way to generate those your samples. And then Simon uh, students prepare their own audio data set and start training guns and audio during this day. Continuing with the gun model in the following day, we introduce gun space synth, which allows for a more structured and controlled exploration of the left hand space, potentially improving the interpretability of uh, the gun models. And here, hands on exercise includes generating audio samples by uh, moving along some part of the left hand space that the students find interesting and synthesizing those samples together in a short composition structure. Once their Gansen training is done, their assignment includes applying PCA to their Gansen model. During this course, we also introduce alternative ways to generate audio sequences of any length uh, to sample RNN model, which utilizes RNN, RNNs in audio domain. This is in contrast to the fixed length sequences of Gansen. However, sample RNN is significantly slower. Uh, here, uh, uh, Simon includes sample RNN training for students. And later on, when the students present uh, their composition ideas, and they also describe a particular narrative that links the composition to the deep learning models introduced in this course, and they start working on their composition. Here is the, uh, uh, the first example, Shannon's composition, which is based on a particular music set theory, and only certain pitch classes can be used in this composition, and primarily AI duet was used as a tool in this composition. Uh, this is another student project composition example by Eduard Miyahi Tampu, noise to noise, using gun space synth for the generating audio samples, which were then used for this piece. Conditioning of Affective Music Generation by Jorge Forero, Gilberto Bernandez, and Monica Mendez. Uh, is this probably online? Yeah, it's another video. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. My name is Jorge Forero, and I am completing my PhD in digital media at the University of Porto under the supervision of Professor Monica Mendez and Professor Gilberto Fernandez. My paper is titled Our Words Now, and it is about affective music generation conditioned by semantics. This research is part of my thesis project titled Emotional Machines, which focuses on the model speech based recognition for affective virtuous environment generation. To address this issue, we have been tracking different disciplines and methods contributing to this topic. In detail, we review two main paradigms adopted in automatic music generation 
rules-based and machine learning models. Of note are the deep learning architectures that aim to generate high fidelity music from textual descriptions. These models raise fundamental questions about the expressivity of music, including whether emotions can be represented with words or expressed through them. The verbalization of emotions conveyed through music has been a topic of interest and intense philosophical discussion. However, the cornerstones for systematically exploring the interplay between emotions and music only appeared in the late 19th century. Models for analyzing and measuring emotions can be mainly grouped into categorical, dimensional, and prototype-based models. Once the emotional framework is established, researchers can explore how different structural music elements relate to the emotional experience. In this context, studies have consistently demonstrated that various musical properties, including rhythm, melody, harmony, and timbre, play a significant role in shaping our emotional response to music. Thus, effective algorithmic compositions focuses on developing methods for conditioning the emotional content of music composed by algorithmic means to evoke a desired emotional response in the listener. Commonly, used methods are rules based on machine learning systems such as neural network architectures. However, automatic music composition conditioned by emotion is a challenging task that involves several problems such as the ambiguity of language. Language is inherently ambiguous and subjective, leading to different musical interpretation and making it challenging to capture the intended emotions in the music structure. The subjectivity of emotions. The experience of emotions is unique to each individual. Therefore, effective music generation models mainly capture the intended emotion of some listeners. The complexity of music. Music is a complex art that involves multiple components, including melody, harmony, rhythm, and timbre. Generating musical coherent and emotional expressive music is a challenging task that requires models to capture the relationship between these components and emotion which are now trivial. Natural language understanding is at the top of human concern, but there are a lot of gaps and bias to be solved. So the question of whether words are enough to, should may remain open, but overcoming its limited capacity, language equally leverage musical creativity. Obrigado. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So we are entering the ALT AMC papers poster session. And first paper is Closing the Loop, Enabling User Feedback and Testing in Symbolic Music Generation Through a Python Framework and Ableton Live Integration by Rui Goa. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Rigo, and uh, I'm doing my final year PhD in Universal Sussex. I'm the avatar of this AIMC, and uh, you may see how see, see me for a number of days. And uh, my supervisor is Sarah Magnussen, Chris Kiefer, and Ivor. And uh, what I'm doing in my PhD study is for the symbolic music generation. Today, I would like to talk about uh, a project to closing the gap, which is to enabling user feedback and the testing in symbolic music generation 
through a Python framework and Ableton Live integration. Um, the cutting edge AI system and the limited user access is an uh, issue in the current uh, eco environment, I think, uh, in the symbolic music generated field. In one on one side, there are so many models, and uh, there are so many models, but most of them, they ended up in the GitHub repo, ended up in the research papers, and uh, some of them didn't uh, reveal their code. And uh, even though some of them offer the collab notebook, but uh, it's not uh, easy interaction with the end users. And uh, on the other side, there is a scarcity of the user interface. And uh, we can see there are some uh, collab interface, there are some web interface, and uh, there are very few plugins. But uh, anyway, it's quite hard for the end users to try what uh, they are the latest uh, research. So there are barriers for the users to learn, even to learn what they, the, they gave for the custom UI, for example. If some uh, uh, researcher makes some custom UI, they need some time to learn. And for the developers and the researchers, there's no valuable insight from those musicians as feedback. And also, they cannot uh, test what their system doing in an easier way. So there are so many limitations here. I would like to go back to <laughs> a little back to my research journey. And uh, in 2021, I, it's my first time to attend the AI song contest. At that time, I have a multi-track in feeling model, which is to generate uh, the different tracks and the different bars with several controls. And you can see here the first I, the collaborative phase has some several elements. First one is to show the score. The second one is to show the control. Actually, this tonal tension is, is the same as my implementation of Alan Chu's tension model, the spiral array model. And also, this one is the user parameter. They, they like to change some parameter, and they like to change what to generate. And there's a button to reset to the original. If they are not happy, or go back to the previous control if the current generation is not good enough. So you can see as a collab interface, although it has lots of elements. If I would like to do it uh, internally or to change some notes, it's quite hard. It, the user can see, OK, what is a note here and what is a the control there. But uh, if they would like to just change some notes here or do the things uh, iteratively, like they cannot press Command plus Z or something. They need to press a button. And uh, that is some limitation in this one. So actually, it's quite time, time consuming for me to make something. And uh, then, uh, one year later, I make a plugin in the Ableton Live. Here, the user can select the place they would like to change, and uh, this the uh, Mics for Live plugin I made here. And uh, you can see it has the show some real info information. It's uh, show the basic meta metadata of the MIDI, and uh, they can calculate the control inside this MIDI track and also select what they want to do, and there are some control here. OK, this is MaxLoy plugin. The user can add a note, edit a note, and they can change the control back and forth. And it, uh, it can help me to do the co-creation for the first time, I have to say. And then uh, several months passed. It is uh, this year. I improved the interface. Now it is like uh, this shape. And this one is used in the AI concert in Liverpool. I have some collaboration with the team in Guato from University of Liverpool. And one of the researchers called Mickey Bryan, he wrote uh, two pop and two classical songs based on two custom models I fine tuned on a specific data set. And uh, this is like this interface, and the model is hosted on Colab. And uh, uh, he used this interface to write the four songs. And then, actually, the gap is, hasn't been filled yet because <laughs> it is a very customized thing. I would like to have a generalized thing so that all the researchers, if especially they are doing inter interactive offline symbolic music generation, they can use that. And it should offer minimum effort for AI and human co-creation. 
which means that they don't need to understand something rather something more than their model. They just need to know what it's really doing inside their model, and they just need to know what the parameters they like to control. And to realize that thing, I summarize some some uh, rules here. So for the server side, actually, they only need the some user custom functions, and it should provide API to convert the MIDI back to the node and the node to the MIDI, and also the same for the parameters. And for the plugin side, it is to collect the MIDI and uh, collect the parameters and also send and receive the updated or the existing thing. And uh, for, okay, why it doesn't go? Yeah, and uh, for the plugin side, actually this is, uh, uh, actually it's a preliminary, actually it's my first, uh, first uh, trial. I do the first trial is like uh, to use Ableton Live collect the nodes and then the master patch to collect the parameter. Actually, this is realized before, and uh, actually this is what they need to do for the basic functions. And uh, to realize that to generalize the thing, it needs some fixed functions. For example, because this thing is is implemented in the arrangement uh, view. For from from my understanding, the the musicians would like to do this in the Arrangement view, arrangement view, which they can edit the notes easily and uh, see the notes easily, rather than in the clip view, which is just a clip over there, like the Google Magenta. So I implemented those things in the arrangement view, and they can select okay the start bar and the bar start track and the track. So they can select what they want to do. There should be a limit because the max they have a limit for the notes. If they select all the track, all the notes, it may be over a limit of the max because it. The max patch between one patch to another patch, there's a limit. So that's the existing background thing they need to set. And also the defined functions and parameters, which is specifically to a config file. So the user just need to config uh, con like a JSON file to put all the things here, and those things can be instantiated by the diction dic dictionary object from the max for live and uh, it will automatically create those buttons, created those uh, setups of the parameters understand and receive data is the same as before. And also the, in the Python side, I have some register function to do the mappings between the user, what they would like to do, and the Python side, they just need to use the register function to do the mapping and uh, to do that uh, user just don't need to do any other C++ or anything, they just need to know what their model is really doing. So in the poster, please uh, have a look about uh, this demo. This demo is the previous one, but I'd love to talk about what I'm currently implementing. And this one is also worth trying if we'd like to do some uh, music research. If you also, if you'd like to attend this year's yeah, song contest, maybe there are a few days left. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. So next is introductory studies on Raga multi-track music generation of Indian classical music using AI by Srinkath Gopi and Femi William. Uh, do I have it here? I don't seem to have the, is there somebody online maybe? Uh, nobody from the chat. Looks like there is nobody present in this. Uh, this. Can you see that? Yeah. And nobody's on the chat.
um, a video file. Let's see. First. Okay. Oh, it's not downloaded. So. Oh, this one. Okay, wasn't downloaded. We got it. <laughs> music generation of Indian classical music using AI. Shrikan Gopi, Dr. Penny William, Kennesaw State University, Georgia, USA. The world of AI-based music generation is expanding at a phenomenal rate. Our deep dive into the O14 dataset unveiled over 273 AI music papers within just the past two years. However, there's a notable gap, the generation of Indian traditional Raga-based music. Raga, an extensive melodic framework for music, forms the heart of Indian classical music. It provides the platform to compose music in distinctive emotional landscapes through various note sequences. These Ragas, such as Indol and Todi, could evoke unique emotions ranging from joy and romance to devotion. Raga-based creative music composition phases includes theme selection, melody creation, rhythm composition, and the intricate processes of mixing and mastering. Raga music's complexity presents significant challenges for all these steps in AI music composition due to the following factors. Firstly, Ragas use microtonal intervals, or shortest, which vary and are smaller than Western music semitones. Secondly, Ragas encompass expressive nuances like gamakas and intricate timing variations, hard to digitize. Thirdly, the improvisational essence means the same raga can differ widely across performances. Fourthly, some ragas align with particular times or seasons. Lastly, rhythmic structures, or talas, in Indian music are intricate, with ascending and descending scales carrying unique nuances hard to capture in digital models. Our aim is to develop machine learning model that can generate music by incorporating these nuances of classical Indian music. It would be an AI tool that could generate musical tracks which can be used as an instrumental or a voice added song. During the creative process, AI could generate complex melodies within the Raga framework. From rhythm patterns and chord progressions to the final mixing, AI could assist in related compositions abiding by a Raga's unique fundamentals. This paves the way for an exciting exploration into the Raga genre that, although deeply rooted in ancient culture, faces the threats of obscurity and modernization. Methodologies, our primary resource is the Dunya dataset, a rich collection from the Comp Music Project hosting nearly 250 ragas played on 12 diverse instruments. This dataset allows for in-depth musicological analysis. In addition, we also explore ways to extract melodies from the published songs. In our quest for rock and music generation using AI, we initially applied LSTM models to this dataset. LSTMs are adept at learning long-term dependencies and are particularly suitable for melody generation. For instance, using the LSTM-based performance RNN from the Google Magenta project, we could model polyphonic music with expressive timing dynamics. LSTM system generates MIDI events, covering 128 pitches, time shifts, and velocities. These events allow precise expressiveness in timings. The model dictates note selection, timing, and intensity. In our experiment, the produced music however seems to lack proper raga expressions, nuances, and long-term patterns. Impressively, multi-track music model or the MMM, an AI-generative system based on the transformer architecture, provides the ability to capture tempo sequences from each track. It can then produce multiple tracks, and arrange it in parallel in harmony, resulting in a polyphonic raga composition. As an extension of the MMM architecture, we introduce our new Raga Multitrack Music Machine, or RMMM. Building on MMM's unique feature, the innovative RMMM would be trained on purely Raga-based dataset. It would skillfully interlay separate, temporal sequences from each subtrack, culminating in a harmonious, polyphonic Raga composition. RMMM interlays as separate sequences from each track, resulting in a harmonious Raga composition. Similar to MMM, RMMM could produce Raga-based songs based on given input styles, features, or Raga's using a UI interface too. 
one rock and music performance. The eclectic rock system offers thousands of musical scales, each tied to specific melodies, moods, meditation, healing, devotion, sleep, and even specific hours of the day. Rock and music, with its intricate nuances, can be particularly challenging to compose for those not well versed in its complexities. A performer seeking new music could use RMMM to assist compose rock and melodies, even with a limited knowledge. In addition to the melody, the RMMM will be developed to produce all elements of a song like rhythm, pads, chords, and other accompaniments. Thus, it could be used for generating instrumental or background music for live performances. In essence, traditionally, a performer or a musician often spend hours, even days, composing new background tracks or melodies. AI-based RMMM deep learning model not only accelerates this process but also ensures the preservation of the rich intricacies characteristic of raga in the produced music. Moving forward, we would develop an innovative audio pre-processing pipeline to extract raga melodies to train RMMM. Thank you. Okay, so last paper, uh, building a nature soundscape generator for the post-biodiversity future from every big. Hi everyone, I'm Avery. I am a PhD candidate at the Norwegian Institute for Nature Research where I'm studying um, soundscape ecology and computer science. And this project is called Building a Nature Soundscape Generator for the Post-Biodiversity Future. So biodiversity is increasing across all sorts of ecosystems and obviously this is likely to continue. Um, and this trend in parallel is reducing the quality of natural soundscapes, which is critical for how we relate to like our surroundings and to nature and each other even. And this plot shows, um, it's like a, a nature paper that went through historical bird surveys and then um, sort of generated soundscapes based on the number of birds historically that they saw. and both in Europe and America, there's decreases in acoustic diversity and acoustic complexity. So like exposure and immersion in nature, many, many studies show that it reduces stress and blood pressure and improves intention. Um, and for example, like this plot here from a study in Japan took um, a profile of mood states of participants in an office and then drove them to either a forest or an urban area and um, across many different um, moods, there's you know decreases in anxiety and fatigue related to um, being in a forest versus an urban area, which makes sense. Um, and some other studies have shown that virtual reality and um, audio of nature has some of these same similar uh, stress relieving properties. So based on that, um, I assembled a global nature soundscape data set from uh, Zeno Canto, some of my own recordings, um, and some collaborators. And I used the convolutional variational autoencoder uh, to encode these in order to then explore the uh, latent space with the idea of developing like infinite new soundscapes for uh, future generations to use. So here's just a brief overview of the, the model I made. Uh, it takes a male spectrogram about four seconds long and passes it through five layers of convolutions to a uh, latent space of 1024 size. And this is just a visualization of view map of the, uh, some of the test set and where that falls in relation to each other. Like for example, you can see like the Ithaca winter morning and Ithaca summer morning, both in New York um, are almost on top of each other because they're recorded in the same place with a similar microphone. But then Bergen in Norway, for example, has, is very far away in the latent space. 
So here's some of the um, generations from the pilot model. Um, it's quite good in terms of frequency, but struggles a little bit in terms of like some staccato notes that are typical for birds, like in the Borneo example in the top right. Um, and that could be because the data set itself has lots of drones and like this in this uh, Ithaca flight calls and cicadas and rain. So the model is sort of blurring out things a little bit. But the interpolation is working and you can move between um, two completely different like environments and generate um, like nonlinear combinations of these environments. So um, here's some examples of, of uh, audio in France going to Borneo and the owl calls sort of morphing into cicada calls there. And here's some other examples. So going forward, um, I think more curating of the training set in terms of like higher quality microphones um, would do a lot for uh, improving the regenerations and uh, building on like deeper pre-trained networks or using something like Rave to do like uh, real-time uh, installation of this is something I'm looking to do. And definitely um, looking for any comments in the poster session on uh, how I can improve on the reconstructions. So I want to leave on this, which is some of my inspiration for this study. And this is some commentary on the early A-Life piece called Turbulence from John McCormick from um, the book Metacreation, which was a great, a great uh, book on the early A-Life movement. So our first world society is rapidly turning inward to the comfortable synthesis of the computer screen in order to hide from the uncomfortable reality we have created around us. I think when you're making, when one is making AI art, especially related to nature, we should ask, can the beauty to be replace the beauty that's been? So, thanks. Okay, so this was the last paper. Um, so we can all go enjoy uh, the posters and maybe unleash all our insights and questions. And uh, last thing, uh, I would like to remind you that 4.15 we have the closing session. So see you later.